Page four, driving range. Four four time, it's got one sharp. It's either in G major or E minor. Well, look at the end. Last couple measures, you're down here in bass clef. Sounds like E minor to me. I'm gonna say it's probably an E minor. Right hand first. We have a pickup, half a beat. So we're coming in on the end of four. Four and. Four and, and you, you see bass clef in both stabs, so you're down here. Four and one and two and three and four and. That last note there, that E, that's tied. You hang on to it. Second line is much the same thing. Go over to the second line, third measure. You're here. Now you come up, second finger, and that's tied until you go. So the counting for those two measures, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and that's tied. There's a lot of tied notes in this, isn't there? Then you get treble clefts, so you come up here. Basically, you're doing the same thing you were doing here. It was an octave higher. Except in the third measure, look at it. You bring your third finger up here, and you have a B flat. And then your third finger can. The whole reason for doing that is so you didn't have to put a little finger on a black note. I mean, you could have used fourth finger on the A, and it's just easier because the little finger is a short finger. The, you know, it, it works better on the white keys most of the time. It's not as bad, short as the thumb. The thumb is a, a, a whole other adventure. But here, it's just easier just let the hand come up and use third finger so you can use fourth finger on that black key. And then come down immediately. Last line, it's you're here. You're playing that A. It's held over from the line before. It's third finger on that. So it's one and two and three and then they want you to lift up and, and then that E is tied forever and then the last two measures you get bass clef back you're down here fourth finger third finger excuse me but bring the thumb down here you could have used fourth finger though. you can do that too there's no you don't have to use third finger fourth finger works left hand is mostly quarter nose it keeps the beat down here on thumb on E do that for a while and the last measure of the first line there's C's and you're staying down here the whole time quarter notes till you get to the last line second measure one two and three and four and that's a B one and two and three and four and so forth put the hands together what could possibly go wrong let's see Four and one and two. See these corner notes in the left hand are like a drum. They're just keeping the pulse for you. And you can see how the notes line up between the hands so you know when to play a note in the right hand along with the left hand. Let's just go through the whole thing this way. Third line down, first measure. You're here. You only get a half a count to come up, so be sure right after you play that. So watch that one. So again, it's here. Two, three, and four. So forth. Watch you can play the hands together. And then go ahead and put in the articulation, the slurs and the staccatos. And the left hand is staccato all the way through except in the last line when they give the slurs otherwise a nice light wrist staccato is fine in the right hand you have slurs and staccato and I'm just bouncing off the keys on those staccato ba ba da ba da da kind of fun huh
last line, um, last measure there is slurred. But the left hand is still staccato. So you're doing different things in these hands. Look out. Second line. And then go over to the last two measures, second line. You're here. There's an accent on that beat, so play it out. There's a slur there, lift up before you play those. So again, the last two measures, second line here. Now here they're not giving you any articulation. So it's really up to you. Do you want to connect them? separate them. When they don't tell you anything, it's up to you as the interpreter to decide how you want to play it. It's up to what do you like to hear, what do you want. I suggest you go ahead and pretty much connect them for now. And you can experiment with the separating or whatever. Maybe you separate some of the notes and not others. It's up to you. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and connect them though. Except the left hand is still staccato. And then the last two measures of the fourth line there, you're here. That's an accent on that B, and it's a B, not a B flat here, so give it a here. So you lift up before you do the, it's, it's a new slur. This is where in the last line, first measure, we can get up get away with this fingering because we're lifting between the slurs here. And there's no accent on that E. Here this time there's no accent. You can put just a little bit of an accent on it because it's a syncopated note, but otherwise there's no accent. So forth. Then we add the dynamics starts out moderately soft. That's the right hand. Keep the left hand soft. We want to hear the right hand. You'll have to decide what moderately soft is. It's not soft. It's a little louder than soft, but it's on the soft side. Whatever. And you're going to stay there pretty much until the end of the second line when you crescendo up to a moderately loud there's not a lot of difference between moderately soft and moderately loud. They're next to each other, so you come up just a little bit. So the last two measures, the second line is now. And this is the right hand I'm talking about. Keep the left hand soft. Again. You come back down to moderately soft. When you begin this third line, you're moderately soft again. And then on these, on the left hand, this is the first measure of the third line. You can get these just a hair louder because these, the le left hand's soft. It's got to be under. And you can take it up to maybe a moderately soft. Because when the right hand comes in, that's moderately loud again. You're going to stay about that level until the end of the fourth line and you come up to a loud. And then you come back down to moderately loud. And then the last line you're moderately loud. And then you're going to gradually crescendo to a very loud. Don't get very loud to the last beat, the last note. Plan it out. So you've got three measures to go from moderately loud to very loud. You could actually come down to moderately soft and give you more room to grow, it's up to you. But like the second measure or the last line, I'd play that whole measure on the moderately loud or moderately soft side here. A little louder. A little louder. Now 
now at the end you really crescendo. And they put an accent on a fortissimo note. I, uh, I don't know why. Fortissimo is loud. If you accent it, you come up to really, really loud. So don't get vulgar. Don't get don't get bangy. Keep the wrists relaxed and all just very loud. And the, that last just. Then we talk about the speed. Well, how fast should it go? Relentlessly is sort of a mood, an atmosphere. It's not a speed. But the metronome marking gives us a clue about how fast they want it to go, around 152 in that area. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly, and you have to play it accurately and under control, so don't go faster than that. So your speed might be a little a less, whatever. So it's somewhat just, you're working up over time. with the speed it's up to you but we want to hear the right hand so this just just left hand just keep this steady and keep it out of the way I'd like to do a play with me on this just to double check the notes and the rhythms I'm not going to do the dynamics and we're going to go really really slow because I just want to check notes and rhythms you need to make sure you got those correct because you can play a wrong note and not even realize it of course your teacher might tell you but if you don't have a teacher what do you do so I'm going to give us four counts, and we'll come in on the end of four. Now let's try this together slowly. One, two, ready, and go. And, and. Two, three, four, done.